One thing I had observed as a retail golfer was almost all the best courses in America, unlike Scotland and Ireland, are private. So avid golfers, of which there are millions, would love to play Pine Valley or Augusta or Shinnecock or any number of private courses. So I thought that was a negative for golf in America and an opportunity for someone to come in with a quality golf course that's open to the public. That's been my ethos since day one. Golf should be affordable. Golf should be something that anyone can play, and that's what we found here at Bandon Dunes. My name is Mike Kaiser, and I started Bandon Dunes 25 years ago. The actual success of Bandon Dunes was astonishing to everyone, including me. No one thought that people would come to Bandon. We took bets on whether we'd do four or five or 6,000 rounds per year, which was roughly break even. And everyone was just astonished that avid golfers would journey all the way to Bandon, Oregon, which is four hours from Portland, 11 hours from San Francisco. Who would make that drive or, or flight? Many people did. I mean, we are now doing 260,000 rounds per year with a lot of people contributing to that. Mike Kaiser is an acclaimed golf course developer. He's the founder of Bandon Dunes Golf Resort. He's inspired, financed, and built other courses around the world. In 1985, he gets inspired when he plays a bunch of legendary Irish Lynx courses. And that same year, he gets his first opportunity as a developer. He buys a 60-acre sand site in New Buffalo, Michigan, to prevent it from becoming a strip of condos near his family's lake house. He turns that into what's called the Dunes Club, and the Dunes Club is a private nine-hole course. It's very successful, he has a great time doing it, so he decides, I want to do another project. It whets his appetite for something bigger. And basically, at the time, he also felt that America's best courses were either too expensive for the average person or gatekept by private clubs, so he felt like he could do something where he could create affordable golf for just about anybody. So Lynx Golf comes from the Old English word link, which means rising ground or ridge, and refers to sandy area along the coast. You'll find many of the traditional Lynx courses in Ireland, Scotland, and England, and there's a very specific definition as to what can be a Lynx course. This essentially created a style of golf where you're on these sand sites, you're by the water, by the ocean, they're very wide fairways, oversized greens, there's a lack of trees, and it's, it's kind of very a minimalist and natural type thing. Initially, I looked on the East Coast for a site and despaired when after two years, the only things I had seen were on the intercoastal waterway. They were on water, but not the ocean. I couldn't find a site even for even beginning for sale for even 100 acres, much less the 500 acres I sought. And I expressed my disappointment to my good friend, Howard McKee, who worked at Skidmore Owings and Merrill. And he said, you should look in Oregon. And I knew nothing about Oregon, but I hadn't been finding anything on the East Coast. Put the word out, and lo and behold, within a year, a broker called and said, I've got this site right on the ocean, a little over a mile of ocean frontage, big sand dunes. I don't know anything about golf, but I just wanted to call you and tell you about it. I rushed out there, and uh, it was so good that I then rushed up to Seattle and talked with the three old guys who had owned the site for years, and they said, you seem like a nice young man, and we haven't been able to sell this property for four years. Sure, we'll reduce the price by, by half, and we'll wish you well. It was truly serendipitous. So I had the money, then I needed an architect. So the hardest thing to get started was choosing an architect that knew something about Lynx Golf. And I went to Glen Eagles and talked with Jimmy Kidd and his son David, and they said, oh, sure, we know how to build Lynx Golf courses. Let us at it. And they came right to Bandon Dunes and did a fabulous routing. And, and then the question was, who will ever come to Bandon, Oregon to play it? And we didn't know the answer to that until the first year when we did not the 10,000 rounds I thought was unrealistic, but sort of my, my prayer. The first year we did not 10,000 rounds, but 25,000 rounds. Last year, Bandon Dunes recorded an astonishing 257,000 rounds played bolstered by a top-tier hospitality experience and an eight-figure merchandise business. Forbes estimates the resort had just shy of $125 million in revenue last year and turned a profit north of $31 million, valuing the resort at $350 million. Demand isn't slowing either. Bandon Dunes has an 18-month waiting list, and it's easy to see why. 
Four of its full-length courses rank among Golf Digest's list of America's 100 best, and its $350 greens fee is roughly half of the $675 that Pebble Beach charges. When you ask Mike Kaiser about his ethos, about what he's trying to accomplish with his courses, he's always first to kind of state that he wants it to be in tune with nature, to complement nature, and that's been a core part of his mission, especially with Bandon Dunes. Additionally, he owns a bunch of land that he keeps solely for conservation, and when he builds, he kind of builds in an environmentally conscious way. Obviously, golf course development can be polarizing. Developers see things one way, environmental groups and other organizations see them another. It's hard to generalize without knowing the specific situation, but if you talk to Mike Kaiser, the one thing he will always say is he's committed to building courses that are synced with nature. My dad was an Eagle Scout, and he drilled into us whenever we went on a hike, a mountain climb. A good camper leaves the campsite better than when he got there. So that was sort of early environmentalism. If you're gonna make a mess, make sure you clean it up. It's a lot easier when building a golf course if you don't have real estate as part of your plan, because then you just need beautiful dunes, use them for the entire coastline, as opposed to reserving some of the best land for residences. It's a better way to stay pure. Being an acclaimed golf developer wasn't exactly what Mike Kaiser thought he would be doing with his life. After college and after a stint in the Navy, he got out and he was planning to enter Harvard Business School. In 1971, he set to go into HBS and while on a ski bum vacation, he decides he doesn't want to go. So the way he tells the story is that his subconscious was working overtime because he literally had a dream that he had to start a greeting card company making cards on 100% recycled paper. He got together with his best friend and college roommate, Phil Friedman. They formed Recycled Paper Greetings and it actually grew into a very substantial business. In 2005, they sold it for $250 million to a private equity firm. My father was aghast. He, had, he, has, he was a Wharton graduate and thought nothing made less sense to him than not going to business school and starting a greeting card company, about which I knew nothing. The whole idea was greeting cards on 100% recycled paper, so we thought in, in the days of beginning ecology, they would just sell themselves. Definitely wrong. Everyone thought it was a nice idea, but they bought cards based on the content, not on the paper. We call our dads and say, Dad, will you give us $5,000 to start this greeting card company about which we know nothing? And my father and uh, Phil Friedman's father both gulped and said, okay, just this once. No one thought it was a good idea. The early days at RPG were going to the Yellow Pages in Chicago because we had chosen Chicago as the place to live. Looking under artist, bold type, we figured if they could afford a bold type inclusion in the telephone book, they were better than the ones without a bold type. And we would just dial them up and go see them, and we would basically ask them for their old Christmas cards. And a surprising number of them thought it was sort of cute, and they said, if, if you like them, sure, here, take, take my last 10 years. So at that early going, we actually had an easy time finding pretty good content from uh, Chicago artists. So in 1975, Kaiser and Friedman meet Sandra Boynton, who's a Yale graduate with a penchant for humorous illustrations and clever messages. The way Kaiser describes this time in history is that greeting cards back then were all hearts and flowers. And Sandra's approach offered something different, humor, cleverness. So they sign her, and instead of the typical $50 per design fee back then, she asks for a royalty, which they grant. It's probably one of the best decisions they ever made, because by the mid-1980s, the company grossed to over $100 million in revenue. And Kaiser will attribute most of that to Sandra Boynton's work. Now, if you ask him, he'll say she was the woman who made him enough money to build Band of Dunes. He'll call her a genius over and over again, and ultimately, it's true, because the success of Recycled Paper Greetings is what allowed Kaiser to pursue the second career. Sandra Boynton is a genius. We met her at the New York Stationery Show in the 1960s, and we didn't know she was a genius. We knew that she was gifted, but not a genius. Basically, whatever she designed for us sold well, and in many cases, sold superlatively. Her most famous card was a picture of a hippo, a bird, and two sheep with the message, Hippo Birdie to You, and it ran out of stores. We actually had a system where we, we knew what our best cards and our worst cards were, and that was essential for our success, because we could basically make sure that 
only good cards were in at any given store. We grew from two million when we first met her to a hundred million. I would attribute almost all that growth to Sandra Boynton. Been a genius, still a genius. She's still working, doing children's books and children's songs. Whatever field she's in is top of the charts. She's brilliant. A lot of golf aficionados around the world were stunned how well Band of Dunes did and uh, quickly understood the formula. Sand dunes on ocean with great architect equals successful golf. So once Band of Dunes had established itself as an ongoing success, many people came out of the woodwork, I would say, to find sites that they could develop into Lynx golf courses around the world. There are many opportunities close to Band of Dunes Specifically, there are sites for three golf courses that I'm looking at just south of Bannon. And then further than that, if I live long enough, are the beautiful dunes, 50 miles of dunes going north. So to the south, there are at least three sites that I'm attracted to. Going north, there are as many as four, five, six sites. For the good of golf, golf should not be for the rich. And to fall Pebble Beach on one thing, I mean, they are approaching $1,000 for one round of golf, which is out of out of sight for many people. We try to be far less than half of what Pebble Beach is, which right now is 110 to $350, which is an affordable amount, depending on the time of year. And I, I think that that's important for golf. Mm-hmm.